In this video, we're going to be learning how to size a single phase motor along with its thermal overloads, branch circuit conductors, and its overcurrent protective device. So in the question we have, it says a 230 volt, 5 horsepower single phase motor with a service factor of 1 and a temperature rise of 45 degrees Celsius will be fed from a disconnect containing dual element time delay fuses. When you take any type of master's or journeyman's exam, you need to pay very close attention to the details that they give you. They give you just about all the information for a specific reason. Sometimes they will throw things in that you don't necessarily need to try to get you to use that information when you don't. So you've got to be very clear about what information you pick up, what you use, and what you don't use. So it's very important that you understand the process of how to do these calculations and equations because oftentimes you can miss something by not paying close de attention to the details or try to throw something in there or do something that's not actually required for this type of calculation. So the first thing we need to do is find the full load amps of this motor because we can't do a whole lot with just five horsepower. So to do that, we are going to go over to table 430.248. This is the full load currents in amperes of single phase alternating current motors. And we'll go down and we'll see that a five horsepower at 230 volts is gonna be 28 full load amps. So we can go back to the equation and actually, or back to the example, and actually be able to start working through the equations to get the information that this question may ultimately ask us for. So to do the thermal overloads, that's the first step. We need to look over to 430.32. This is the continuous motor uh, duty motors that's going to tell you what type of devices that you need. So if we look at 430.32A1, it's going to say a separate overload device that is response, uh, responsive to motor current. This device shall be selected to trip or shall be rated and no more than the following percent of the motor nameplate full load current rating. Well, we don't have the full load current rating of the nameplate, so we're going to use the full load amps. Now it's going to tell us a couple of things here and a lot of that information is that we saw in the original question is going to come into play. It's why it's important to pay attention to these details. So it says motors with a marked service factor of 1.15 or greater would have 125%. However, we have a service factor of 1, so we don't qualify here. It also then says motors with a marked temperature rise of 40 degrees Celsius or less is 125%. We have 45 degrees Celsius, so they're not going to qualify for these. So we're going to be in the all other motors section at 115%. We'll go back and we'll take the full load amps of 28 times 115% or 1.15, which is going to give us 32.2 amps. That will be the size of our thermal overload device. These are very specific. You can get these generally uh, in any almost any size, and, and they've done the math to work out what motors are going to have what and so forth. It's generally not hard to get one that is specifically rated for what you're trying to do or very, very close to it. So that is how the thermal overload is done, and we can move on to the branch circuit conductors. Now again, to know how to do this, we need to reference the code articles that are going to tell us that, and that's going to be 430.22 for a single motor. And it says the conductors that supply a single motor used in a continuous duty application shall have an ampacity of not less than 125% of the motor full load current rating as determined by blah, blah, blah. Now, notice that it says continuous duty application. So what that means is it's a continuous duty application, and that more or less applies to generally all motors. Uh, anything in a commercial facility and so on will be a continuous duty application. Uh, one of the few examples that wouldn't qualify as this would be like a garbage disposal in a house that would not qualify as a continuous duty. But when taking these exams and you get motor calculations, 99.9% .9 of all the exams in this country are going to use continuous duty applications. That's basically the testing standard for how to do this. So we'll go back, take our full load amps at 28 times 1.25 or 125%, and we will come up with 35 amps. So that's what we're gonna factor and use in order to size our wire, which we will do over in 310.15B16. This used to be the 310.16. If you've been around for a while, they had to go change that for some reason. But nevertheless, um, we'll go down the 75 degree column. This is another thing that you kinda need to know when taking these exams, is that unless you are specifically given 
all of the information needed to use one of the other columns, you're going to use the 75 degree column. Uh, when sizing uh, branch circuits for motors or for or feeder sizes, unless they tell you that it is THHN wire and every single one of the terminals and the breakers, the disconnect, the motors are all rated for 90 degrees, you're going to use the default 75 degree. And any question that I've ever gotten on one of these exams, they have never given me that. If, if they give you this, the kind of testing standard is that you're using THHN copper, but without having all of the information to tell you that, yeah, you can use the 90 degree column, the breakers rated for 90 degrees, so on and so forth, you're going to default back to the 75 degree Celsius column. So if you go down here and you're looking for 35 amps, you're going to notice that 10 wire qualifies for 35 amps, except that there's two asterisks next to it. And that's very important to pay attention to because if you actually were to look at the bottom of this chart, it will reference you back over to 240.4D and tell you to look there. So looking there, it will tell you that unless specifically permitted in 240.4E uh, through G, the or E or G, excuse me, the overcurrent protection shall not exceed that required by D1 through D7. If we go down to 240.4D7, it will tell us that 10 gauge copper is good for no more than 30 amps. Now, again, if you're going to be doing correction factors, uh, temperature factors, ambient temperature, then you can use those. But when you're actually sizing the branch circuit, you cannot exceed 30 amps on 10 wires. So we got to go back to the, the sizing chart and we'll see that the next one down is rated for 50 amps, which we will easily fall within that range. And we're going to use number eight THHN copper is how we would do that. Now the final phase in this, in this equation in this problem is to solve the overcurrent protective device. And again, there's more information that's very important. We were told that the disconnect will contain dual element time delay fuses. So to size this overcurrent for the motor, we will go over to table 430.52. This is for all of your motor sizing um, a, for the, the short circuit and ground fault protective devices. And in the first line, we'll see single phase motors. We're using a single phase motor, so that's the line we're going to use. And we'll see under dual element time delay fuses, a 175% uh, factor that we're going to use to determine that. We'll come back and we'll say 28, the full load amps, times 1.75 is going to give us 49 amps is what we're going to use to size the overcurrent device. Now, since this is a branch circuit on a motor and not a feeder supplying or a branch or a, excuse me, an overcurrent device protecting multiple motors, we can go up to the next standard size for simply one single motor. And that will take us up to 50 amps for the overcurrent protective device. And that is how you size a motor, its branch circuit, its thermal overloads, and its overcurrent protective device. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like, uh, please leave a comment, and please sincerely consider subscribing to the channel for more videos teaching you how to do other types of mathematical equations to pass masters and journeyman's electrical exams.